In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use Inkscape to take photos and transform them into images like these. Stay with us. I created this video with sublimation printing in mind, where you can accurately print images with reduced opacity. If you're wanting to use these techniques to create products for print-on-demand, you may find that your print-on-demand company will add a white background to areas that don't have a full opacity. So check with your company before you use some of these techniques. Anything where I've just clipped the image will still be suitable. So in this demonstration, I'm quickly going to show you how you can take a photo and slice it up to make this striped effect. So now I've opened up a clean document. The first thing I'm going to need to do is import my photo. So I'm going to come up to File. I'm going to come down to Import. I'm going to select the image that I want, double click on it, OK to the settings, and that imports my image into Inkscape. I'm working with quite low resolution images, but you can use whatever size images you like. I'm just going to drag that over. I'm going to press uh, the plus on the number pad on my keyboard to zoom in a touch so we can see what we're doing. Move up, and I'm going to come over, grab my rectangle tool. We're going to use a rectangle tool for making our, our stripe design. And I'm just going to drag out the first rectangle, so a nice little thin one over on the left hand side. Perhaps slightly bigger, so I'll just drag that over a touch. That'll do for my first rectangle. I'm going to come up and get my selection tool. To make the, the rectangle at the other end over on the right hand side, all I'm going to do is duplicate this one. So I'm going to press Ctrl D to duplicate it. I'm going to hold down Ctrl to constrain my movement to horizontal, and I'm just going to drag it over till we get to the far side, and we can put it there. So I want to make this a little bit bigger, so we're just going to scale the width. So to do that, if we use this center arrow, it won't affect the height. So we can click on this arrow and just drag it over till it's the width that we want. So I want it fairly wide. I think I'll go with that. So now we've created our two end rectangles. I'm going to use something called interpolate to create the rectangles in between. Um, interpolate needs us to use paths. and at at present, if we hold down Shift, we can select our other rectangle. We'll come up, change to the Nodes tool. You can see that because we've got these square handles and these circular handles, these are both predefined shapes at the moment. So we need to change these to paths. So to do that, if we come up to Path, down to Object to Path, and that changes them to paths. So we can see that now the handles in the corners have changed. So we can go back to our Selection tool. With them both selected, I'm then going to come up to Extensions, down to Generate from Path, and down to Interpolate. So this opens up our Interpolate dialog box. In here we've got Exponent, which just allows us to uh, adjust how the spacing is set out. We've got Interpolation Steps, which is the number of rectangles that we're creating. We've got Interpolation Method. We can stick with Discard Extra Nodes for Long Paths. We've got Duplicate End Paths. So this will duplicate the two rectangles that we've got at the end. We don't need that ticked because we don't want two lots of these end rectangles. So I'm going to untick that one. Uh, interpolation style. So if we had our rectangles with different colours, what this would do is interpolate the colours in between so that it would slowly change colour from one end to the other. It um, doesn't really make any difference to us, so I'm going to leave that the same. And we've got UZ order, which we don't need to touch either. So I'm going to come down, I'm going to select Live Preview so we can see what we're doing. So that's created our in-between rectangles. At the moment they're overlapping and the spaces are uneven. What it's done is space out our rectangles, centres and even distance apart. So we could adjust the spacing by clicking on the exponent so we could reduce that to try and even the gap slightly. Okay, we're stop we're stop there because it's 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 spread them out slightly, but we have got all this irregularity, but we can fix that in a minute. I'm going to want a few more steps. So interpolation steps, this is how many rectangles we're creating. I'm going to make it seven. And we can apply that and then we can close our window. So now we've got our rectangles created, we need to space them a little bit better. So the first thing I want to do is select all of our rectangles. I'm going to click off. I want to drag a box over all of them. When we use interpolation, it tends to group things it creates together. So you can see these, these center rectangles are all grouped together. So if we come up to the top, we can ungroup them. So we've got them all separate. We can then come up to this button up the top here. This is the Align and Distribute Objects dialog box. We click on this one. And this gives us a few options for lining things up. We want to use the Distribute section of our menu. So we want to evenly space these out. So we want to evenly space the gaps in between, which is this button here. 
So if we just click on this, it nicely spaces out our rectangles so there's an even gap between each of them. So with them all selected, we need to turn this into a single path now. So we're going to come up to Path and down to Union. Now I want to hold down Shift, select the image behind. So I want to use these rectangles to create a clipping path. So what that will do is just chop out from the back image strips the same as the rectangles we got here. So we're going to come up to uh, Object, down to Clip and over to Set. And that will create our striped effect. So the next one we're going to look at is just softening the edge of a photo. If you just want to blur out the edges slightly, like I've done with this one, then we can do it in the following way. So with a clean document open, we're going to need to come up to File, down to Import, import the image that we want. This time I'm going to use mountains. So all I'm going to do for this image is just blur out the edge slightly so it fades away. So there's a nice easy way of doing this. So with it selected, if we come up to Filters, come down to Blurs, and then in here we've got Feather. So we click on this one. This set opens up our Feather dialog box. If we click on Live Preview so we can see what we're doing. You can see it's blurred the edge of our image. So depending on how strong you want that feathering to be, you can adjust it until you've got something that you like. I quite like that, so I'm going to stick with that and press Apply. We can get rid of our Feathers dialog box, and we've now got our image with a, a soft edge. So in the next example, I'm going to use masking to create this softened elliptical design. So the first thing I need to do is come and import the image. So come up to File, Import. The first thing I want to do is grab the Ellipse tool and we're just going to drag an ellipse over the top, the shape and size that we want. I'm going to come up to the top, I'm going to click on this uh, paintbrush at the top to open up our Full and Straight dialog box. I'm going to reduce the opacity, so I'm just going to drag that down so we can see what's behind our ellipse. We can adjust the size of our ellipse. So I'm going to be using Blur in a minute to soften the edges of this ellipse. So we do need to make sure that when you're using this technique, that you don't get too close to the edge of the photo because you might get some of these harsh edges included in the image. So I'm happy with the position of our ellipse. Next thing I want to do is just blur it. So we're going to blur it out until it's nice and soft around the edges. So I'm happy with that. I've got my ellipse in the right place. So what I want to do now is increase the opacity back up to full. Um, it needs to be white. For this effect to work, we want it to be white. So come down and make sure that you've got white selected for the colour of your ellipse. I'm just going to grab the selection tool. We can then hold down Shift, select the image behind, and then we're going to come up to Object and down to Mask, Set Mask. And that will remove the background for us, giving this nice soft elliptical edge. So that's another way we can do things. So the next example I'm going to look at is how we can cut out a nice crisp outline to an image. I say in this example I'm using a car, you can use whatever you want. Um, it's just a matter of creating a clipping path. So again, first thing we need to do is import our image. I have created a Bezier tool and nodes tool tutorial. If you click on the link in the top right hand corner, there's, there's a link to it. It runs through how to use all the different settings on the Bezier tool and how to use it in combination with the nodes tool to perfect your paths. So to get started, we're going to come up, select our Bezier tool. We can then come down, we can click where we want to start. We want to create a curve for the next point. So we're just going to hold and drag to create a curve. So I'm just going to continue on like this until I've gone right around the car and completed my path. So now we've created a basic path. We just need to go around and adjust it using the nodes tool. So we select the nodes tool. I'm going to get rid of the fill color and I'm going to change the color of the stroke. So to do that, I'm just going to come down to the bottom here, click on the X to get rid of the fill color, and I'm going to hold down uh, Shift, and I want to select that light green again for the path, because it's nice and clear. So now we've got our path selected. We can zoom in a touch so we can see what we're doing. We can just literally go around and just drag this line so it sits better on our, on our car. Like I say, if you want to learn better how to use this tool, watch the tutorial in the top right-hand corner, and you'll understand exactly what I'm doing. So I think I'll just reduce the thickness of the stroke so I can see the photo underneath a little bit clearer. And I'm just going to continue on round till I've finished cleaning up the path. So 
So once I've got my path looking exactly how I want it, we can hold down shift, select our background image. We can come up to object, down to clip and over to set. And that will cut out our car and leave you with a nice crisp clean edge around our vehicle. So in this example, I'm just going to show you how you can create this design where we've got a nice soft blurred edge of the sky behind and a crisp edge of our balloons. With a clean document open, I'm going to come up, I'm going to import the image that I want to use. So for this example, because I want to create a soft edge to the sky and a sharp crisp edge to our balloons, I'm going to work with two separate copies of the photo. So the first thing I'm going to do is press Ctrl D to duplicate our image. If we open up the Objects and Layers dialog box by clicking on this icon at the top, we've got our layers, we can open that out and we've got two separate images. So these are the two copies of our image. So one of these we can name Balloon. So if we double click, we can name this Balloons and the other one we can name Sky. So now we've got our two separate images that we're going to work with. We can hide our balloons for the time being, so we can just click on the, the little um, eye icon to turn our balloons off. So we want to start with the sky. I want to create a soft edge around our sky, so we're going to use a mask. So I'm going to create a circular mask by coming over to our ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down Control to constrain the proportions so we can drag out a perfect circle to the size we want. So I reckon somewhere around there. I'll get my selection tool. We can just move that back. So when I move the sky over, I just want to make sure that the ropes and the baskets are well within the circle so that when we blur the edge, the ropes and baskets, which will be more difficult to mask, are well within the solid section of the sky. So I'm quite happy with that. So we can open up our fill and stroke dialog box at the top here. We can add a bit of blur to soften those edges, re-increase the opacity. I'm quite happy with that. So the next thing we need to do is turn our ellipse white. So we can just come down to the bottom here, click on the white. We've actually got stroke color down the bottom here as well. So if we hold down shift, we can remove the stroke color and that looks quite good to me. So if we hold down shift, select the image behind, come up to object, down to mask and over to set mask. And that creates our soft edge to our sky. Coming back to our uh, layers and objects dialog box, we can now hide our sky temporarily and we'll open up our balloons image. And this time we want to cut out our balloons. So I'm going to come over and grab the Bezier tool. We can see this dotted line here. So we've actually still got the sky image behind selected. So what we can do is get our selection tool, just come off. We can select our balloons image and we can come in, grab our Bezier tool. We're going to zoom in and we're just going to cut around the edge of these balloons. So I'm going to zoom in a touch to make it easier to trace around the outside of these balloons. We can hold down our scroll wheel to move our image around. So I'm just going to click, click and drag to create our curve. Hold down our scroll wheel so we can move the image. So now we've created our basic balloon path. I'm just going to turn the path green. So I'm going to hold down shift, select that bright green color. I'm going to click on the fill color so I can see my path. And I'm going to change the nodes tool. I'm just going to go around and make any fine adjustments that I need to make. So I think I'm happy with that for what we want it for. So I'm going to get my selection tool, I'm going to hold down shift, select the background image, and I'm going to come up to object and down to clip over to set clip. So that's cut out the top of our balloons. So if we now make our sky visible, so if we zoom out slightly, we can turn our sky layer back on by coming up and clicking on the eye icon on our sky layer. And Inkscape's obviously struggling. So what we can do is if we use our um, plus and minus keys on the keypad, we zoom out, it kind of kicks Inkscape back into action and it sorts itself out. So that's how you can combine softened edges for the background and a nice crisp cut edge for the foreground. So I think that's all I want to look at in this video. Hopefully you found that useful and it gives you some ideas. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.